up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Super Gamer Boys. I'm your host, Garrett Morlang, and here in the studio with me is... What's up, everybody? Your other host, JJ Purdom, and we're sitting here in the studio <laughs> getting ready to bring you podcasting joy of video games and tidings of good cheer, all at the same time as Garrett is holding in a prairie dog. <laughs> That's right. He just got done telling me right before we turned the microphones on, turned these suckers on and made them hot. He said, gosh, I gots to poop. And I said, buddy, go ahead. Go ahead and go poop. But no, he is dedicated. Dedicated. And then I said, I'm going to talk about how you have to poop right now. And he said, please, you can't do that. And I said, oh, yes, I can. How you doing, Garrett? Well, except for the I have to poop thing. Uh, I'm doing great, actually. Yeah, even despite, you know, having a little... Uh um, you know, I'm feeling it work down the the intestinal tract. That's all. You're making it sound like it's more immediate than it really is. It's one of those things where like, oh, you know what? I feel I I feel like, you know, nature calling. But you it, it, maybe dude. in the next hour or two, you know, I have time. It takes you that long? I mean, oh, maybe. Man. Sometimes. You're going to get hemorrhoids, buddy. You just got to get in there and <laughs> no, get no, it no, done. No. I'm not saying I'm going to sit in there for an hour or two. I'm saying an hour or two I'll be ready. You need a good book? I've got a Okay, you're I'll, not you're not getting what I'm saying. You know, I'm yeah. picking up that you're going to go to the bathroom really bad that it's poking its head in and out. That's what happens <laughs> not, when you... That's not it. It's not, not what's happening. Hey, folks, you guys didn't realize when you were listening to the Super Gamer Boys today that you were going to talk about Garrett's poop cycle. <laughs> Me, neither did I. <laughs> neither <laughs> did I. Yeah. How you doing um, this week? I'm uh, doing all right. Yeah, it's been a... Boy, it's been a crazy weekend for me. I uh, We had some friends from Pennsylvania out. And uh, one of them had... Amish people, didn't you? No, not Amish. That's pretty much <laughs> what I remember you saying when we talked about it. You no. said the guy was Amish, had a beard, <laughs> raised barns and churned butter. Not what I said at all. That's almost um, exactly what you said verbatim. He, uh, uh, the, the, it was a friend of uh, ours from uh, Bible College that we went to and then her new boyfriend who was previously Mennonite. He, oh! That's what it was. But he, he left back when he graduated high school, back when he was like 17 or 18. So it's been something where he hasn't been a part of that community for a while. Rum Springer? So it's was not, he thrown out? So it's not like he showed up. Yeah, he didn't show up with a beard. He wasn't thrown out. He, he left. That's uh, what they do in the Amish culture. They throw them out. It's not Amish. I know Amish. I grew up in upstate New York where there's a lot of Amish. He's not Amish. He's Garrett, not Amish. I can different. educate you. I feel like you're not really understanding the Amish culture. I feel Men like- It's the same thing. They I all, feel like you're the last person to talk because you've never left California. No, I have before. Uh, I don't think. I made it in Nevada a couple of times. Okay, you've been as far as Nevada. There's well, a, lot, a lot of Amish people Reno. there. There, there could have been. <laughs> there might have been. Definitely not. Uh, it's the biggest little city in the world, you know. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, we had a weekend where we went out to uh, Friday. I left work early. Thanks for taking my half day shift jd there take all my crappy jobs Welcome. i did all the easy jobs in the morning left all the crappy ones for you yes you did and that's not even a joke and it's not funny i'm still a little bit it's a little a funny little about it um and then uh yeah so that afternoon we drove out to santa cruz hit up the redwood forest north north of there um we took them to the beach so i could see the pacific ocean and then saturday we spent all day saturday like all day saturday in san francisco the city. You, you really know. did do rum springer with this guy, huh? You guys <laughs> yeah. roll up any doobies and get high? Uh, we we talked about it. We talked about maybe. Oh, <laughs> you know it. He's like, before I go back to the colony, <laughs> right? <laughs> you can't right? say stuff like that. No, I, I just yeah. did. He, uh, um, no, well, all over San Francisco, they have these billboards with uh, the cannabis delivery service now. Because it's legal in California. Like, you can go to... You know, stores like a Modesto, they're all over the place. Any city has like, that, that's what happened like overnight. That law was passed and overnight all these stores popped up. I was like, hmm, where did all these guys come from? Um, but yeah, in the Bay Area, they have the delivery service where you don't even have to leave your house. You just pull up the app on your phone, go to their website, order what kind of, you know, marijuana you want, whatever strain you want, they send it to you. Whatever product, if you want the oil, if you want the actual like, you know, you want to smoke it. Whatever. Folks, like, this is really bad. So we yeah, are so lazy that we are getting Grubhub. We're having food delivered to us. But now, now we're taking a national institution of going and buying some good weed from a local drug dealer. A and now corner. we're just having people like <laughs> deliver it to us. We're that lazy. Yeah, that's where we're at. 
But yeah, so we talked a few times about in our uh we we're like, oh, I want to go back to the hotel. I said, Let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. I don't think the hotel would have liked it very much, but <laughs> so <laughs> right. we decided against it. Maybe next time we'll see. Yeah, I could see. Th- I could see you, you know, smoking it up, token a cool one. I don't know if they call it a cool one. I'm, I'm really not cool, Garrett. We do a nerdy video game podcast every week. I'm like the last. Yeah, everyone guy. thinks I'm the nerdy guy in here, but you're like way nerdier than me in just a different way. Yeah. Yeah, there's lots of lots of different ways to be nerdy. Yes, there is. <laughs> uh, well, what about you? How's your week been? Oh, it's been uh, pretty cool. I saw a dead body on Friday. Oh, cool, cool, yeah. cool. No, not cool. Not cool. You've never at all. seen one of those before. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. I haven't. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you about it. So this is a first. I'm at work. Uh, let me just ask one thing real quick. You've never been to like an open, open casket funeral or anything like that. No, I have. This was a little bit different. Oh, okay. This is a little bit different. This is not going and seeing uh, Grammy. Not your Grammy, because your you're Grammy I love, and I hope she lives forever. Oh, she will. Uh, oh, I really hope so, because I am looking forward to getting that switch in the mail. <laughs> love you, Grammy. Um, it could happen. So, <laughs> now I'm going to be on the list. I love it. Uh, uh, no. It could happen. Um, no, the... Uh, I've been to lots of funerals and stuff like that, but this was a little bit different. I was stuck in traffic for a really long time. and Like a really long time. Like I was stuck in traffic for over an hour in in town, in the city. Which isn't normal. It's like never. We don't, we don't live in a very big city. No, like traffic not, will get backed up, but it's like maybe like 15 minutes or something you're yeah, stuck. This was like LA traffic. This is like pissed off LA type traffic. And what had happened was they were diverting everybody off of the freeway. And uh, so it was saying, find alternate routes. And I'm under a time crunch trying to get from one stop to the next. And I don't get agitated very easily, but I was really agitated. And earlier in the day, uh, the lady that we work with had told me, I just, you know, I know you guys see a lot of stuff and I worry about you guys having cash on you and getting, she doesn't talk like this, by the way, this is not a good uh, impression of her. She said, I worry about you guys getting like rolled for cash. And I said, first of all, Never say rolled again like that. Uh, And she's also said that she's worried about us, like, you know, stumbling upon a dead body. Like walking into a customer's house. And then being dead. And then being dead. Which is, that's happened with some other pest control companies. It's Yeah, and I always hear that story when you go to, like, you know, the big pest control conferences and stuff, because that's a weird thing that we do. Yeah. (laughs) That's a blast. We're really nerds. Um, But, uh, like, they always say that. And in my head, I'm always like... Why would you just walk in a customer's house for no reason? Like, why are they just like waltzing in there? Like, that always seemed weird to me. Like, I've never had a customer be like, yeah, just go on and let yourself in when you get here. Like, so I always thought those stories were a little weird. I'm like, yeah. maybe the pest control guy did it. Well, I that's went to my a, theory. It could be. It that's could my be. theory. I went to a pest control conference where uh, a guy from a larger company told me that he did pest control in San Francisco for years and years uh, during the graveyard shift. And he told me, uh, he goes, how long have you been doing this? He was like an old grizzled dude. And he's like, I no no joke. He's like, how long have you been doing this, kid? And I'm like, um, I've been doing it for two years now. I've been doing it five years now. But he, he said, yeah, I've seen two dead bodies just walked in on him and stuff. They were stiff as boards. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's horrible. And he's like, yeah, really dead. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, can, can they only be like kind of dead? But no, they were really dead. And uh, so, yeah, Juanita said something like that to me at work, said that she was, I'm just worried about you guys, you know. And I thought nothing of it. It was a throwaway comment. And it turns out, as I'm finding the alternate route, I actually found why all the traffic, I saw all these uh, police lights and everything, and there was uh, somebody had jumped off of a bridge and killed themselves. And I happened to drive right by with their body on the ground with the sheet over them. And I was like, Okay, so that exactly happened just like the lady said earlier today. She's like, man, I hope you don't. And then boom. So I called her and I said, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to tell me that, you know, I hope to heck you win the lottery right now, please. And like, she's like, I hope to heck you win the lottery. I'm like, okay, maybe it'll happen. And I'm on my way to the state yeah. gas station now to buy my <laughs> I went ticket. I bought a ticket right then. Because <laughs> I'm like, what? That just doesn't happen. So yeah, of course, the that she has to say that. And if you only knew... How mad I was until I saw that like somebody had to die. Like it made me feel so bad, like for being upset. Jeez, you're so heartless. On, on heartless, the, JJ. On the positive news, we are the Super Gamer Boys, and we bring you uplifting stories of 
video games and um, joy in our lives. Yeah, we do our best anyways. Um, no, yeah, we bring you uh, the weekly uh, video game and nerdy news you want to know. Um, and now we are expanding to... We're pregnant? No, that's not what we're doing. Okay. I was going to talk about our cool new uh, URL links. Uh, you guys knew we had a Twitch page. You knew we had a YouTube page. Um, and I've updated those URLs. If you want to access any of those, they have nice, easy little websites now to remember. So it's a supergamerboys.com slash Twitch for our Twitch page, uh, slash YouTube for our YouTube page. And then now slash Discord, if you want to join our Discord, which I just convinced JJ to finally join today. Yes, you did. We don't uh, even know what a Discord is. We've had the Discord for a couple of weeks, and everyone's been chatting, and they're like, when are you going to get JJ on? When are you going to get JJ on? I'm like, I'm, <laughs> dude, I'm trying. I'm doing everything I can. He is you know, full on like resisting with all of his might. You know, I love that you that you have finally had to like break it down for people and just letting them know, like, no, he really is a like, moron. JJ is an but, idiot. <laughs> like, he, do- he doesn't get it, and like he's <laughs> he's 40 years old, but it's more like he's 50. Like He just doesn't understand. Yeah, so if you are interested in checking out our Twitch page, um, once in a while we stream, go over there and favorite that. And uh, when we do go live, you'll get a notification. Uh, Go over to our YouTube channel, subscribe to our channel there. You'll get a notification whenever uh, either our new episode goes up, because I upload all of our episodes on there, or if I upload some other videos, which we'll hopefully be working on over the next uh, couple months, we are, this is, this is, this is a little secret for you guys, I haven't. I've sort of talked to JJ, but don't don't tell him yet. You but, gotta, uh, I can't really hear you right now. Can you speak up? Uh, well, just one second. I'm talking with the listeners. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so I'm thinking about doing a cool uh, Halloween series for, for on YouTube where we play scary games. But JJ's being a pain in the butt and won't, won't tell me what days he can come over and play games. So just pester him on, on social media. Hey, uh, right now, I, I the only words that I picked out was hairy butt games. <laughs> I I'm I do not understand. Um, <laughs> are you talking about me? No, 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 no. Am I hairy butt? No, 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 no. Are no, there some? Not. Are you guys trying to play some? But, uh, weird, weird but definitely, hairy butt games? definitely uh, get on JJ and just let him know how how great he is and how he should uh, just work with Garrett a little bit. Don't oh, don't be such a. Thanks, Garrett. Yeah, this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's really sweet of you. Um, so yeah, that's a cool uh, possible YouTube series that might be coming up in a couple months. And then Discord, if you want to chat with us throughout the week, find us at supergamerboys.com slash Discord. Yeah, I just got on Discord earlier today after you created the Discord, and I know you did that two weeks ago, and you kept telling me, hey, come on, let's get on that. Hey, let's get on that. Uh, Just got on earlier today, and I posted. Yeah, I figured that out pretty easy. Thank you for signing me up for that, Garrett. I appreciate that. Moving up in the world. And then if you haven't already, uh, go check us out at patreon.com slash supergamerboys, where you can support us. Um, monthly to help us keep the mics on, the lights on, um, help JJ uh, shower. That's always nice. Um, it costs a dollar every time I go to the travel center. <laughs> yeah, they they do provide their own soap. Oh, which that's is nice. nice. That's nice. Well, it's usually bars that are left there from old truckers and stuff like that. But yeah, they're it's better than nothing. They smell lemony fresh. Lemony. Uh, I, I'm more of an Irish Spring man. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> um. So yeah, uh, go check us out at Patreon where you can. There's different levels you can support us at. Um, even if you can just support us for a dollar, though, that's a huge help. Um, every little bit counts, and we're so thankful for it. A um, couple shout outs. Uh, we have a Patreon producer, Matt Lou. Thank you so much for killing it each and every week, supporting us, keeping us going, um, helping us get the just do the bulk of all of this operation with uh, uh, with. Finance wise, I guess Absolutely. I should say. Thank without you. him, uh, without him and our Patreon sponsor Bill Bird, uh, as well as our other Patreon spo- uh, supporters, uh, we have qu- like five or six of them now. Um, we would not be able to do what we do. So shout out to Matt Lou, Bill Bird, and the rest of you, awesome folks. Thank you guys all so much. What do you and I'm s- so excited. M Dog got out. I heard that he got out and uh, that they released him on parole. Good job. And uh, also heard that he uh, got rid of that stupid Xbox that was taking up all that room in his TV area. And now he's a PS4 player. Well, he has a PS4, but he was telling me the other day that he hates it. (gasps) Are you serious? He says he does not like the controller. He says the controller sucks. I'm like, you know what? You suck. 
Oh man, that was my comeback. Oh, Isn't that boy, pretty that's good a one? pretty good comeback, <laughs> dude. Did you have help with that? That's pretty good. Uh, that was pretty good. That I came up with that all on my own. <laughs> that's pretty good. Um, no, I, I, but I is one of those things where I'm like, eh, I mean, to each his own. I've been using the PlayStation controller for the last, uh, let me see, uh, 22 years. <laughs> 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 so it's like that feels great to me. Xbox controllers feel way too way too big and bulky and like just cheap to me like i love the feel of a playstation controller that's like a very like solid feel and i like the smaller form factor but eh, to each his own if yeah. he wants to hate on playstation you know what that's fine because he's our patreon yeah, producer yeah, and we <laughs> and we totally love him no you matter could, what you could be wrong about stuff matt it's okay <laughs> uh what do you say we get to the nerdy nudes it's now time for the nerdy nudes. That was horrific. Um, first on the, the the news list docket uh, thing here, I need to figure out a good name, a good a good lead in from that. I th- think what happens is you throw me off, like mentally, like my mind. I throw a lot of people off. My mind for some melts. Reason. My mind melts a little bit when you do the weird jingle. Like it's always. I never know what it's going to be. Never know what it's going to be. Are you always worried if you're going to get that edit button uh, all ready to go? Yeah, I like like my finger hovering over the the, the the, the beeper. Yeah. Um, So then we come out of that, and I'm always just like, oh, now it's time for zoom, zoom, Like my mind just, (laughs) (laughs) I get stupider. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Um, First news story here. Uh, You got to say it like a newscaster. Or sorry, a nudescaster. I'm not a nudescaster. Start to just try to read it like a nudescaster right now. I don't, I can't. How would Tom Brokaw or somebody like that sound? <laughs> Good the question. first story, top of the hour. Here. I don't know why that was William Shatner. Yeah, it was <laughs> like, that was not. It was like <laughs> Bill Shatner trying to, you know, read the news. <laughs> you know, something like that. What's, what's our first news stuff? Are you going into Sean Connery a little <laughs> bit? Like he started kind of like. I think I just had a f-ing seizure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm like all confused. <laughs> do it. Hey, look, Garrett, you do it however you want. You're special. Okay. First news story comes from Tech Radar. <laughs> Stop looking at me like that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Death Stranding PC release now more likely as a game at. Wow, well, I can't see. I can't read. You keep throwing me off here. Okay. Death Stranding PC release now more likely as game is no longer a PS4 exclusive. Um, like I said, this comes from Tech, Tech Radar. It's by Darren Allen. Uh, just read a little bit here. The likelihood of Death Stranding coming to PC has increased dramatically as it looks like the upcoming upcoming game will no longer be a PlayStation 4 exclusive. A member of Reset Era's forum noticed that an Australian PlayStation website, the Australian PlayStation website, Death Stranding is no longer present on the list of PS4 exclusive games, although it was before. It has also vanished from the UK site as well as other European official PlayStation sites, which strengthens the rumor that the highly anticipated game is no longer exclusive to Sony's home console and could be coming to PC. Um, and as we've heard before, it won't be coming to Xbox. It's definitely not coming to Xbox. They've confirmed. But um, let's see. This backs up a number of previous rumors, including speculation from a guy who correctly nailed Death Stranding's release date on the PS4, um, who asserted that would be a PlayStation exclusive, but only for a period before hitting the PC um, a six month or year long exclusivity time frame was mentioned, although that's just guesswork. So that's kind of some big, uh, a big chunk of evidence there. Like, why is it disappearing off the, like, why is it no longer listed as a PlayStation 4 exclusive on PlayStation's official website? Um, another little tidbit of, um, what do you, uh, evidence, I guess you could say, is when they release the artwork for the cover of the game, what the front cover will look like. Um, at the top, if it's an exclusive, it will generally say only on PlayStation. It did not say that. It just said, you know, the normal PS4 logo, and that's it. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. What do you think about that? I know you're not really a PC gamer. but No, I'm I not just... a PC gamer at all because I can't afford one. But uh, here's my thought. I think that one of the key things for us as PlayStation gamers is always, and it's one thing that we've always joked with, like, Matt Liu, our, our producer, we always joke that hey, these are the exclusives that only we can play. And that's like a big talking point for us is like, Hey, you can't play this stuff on Xbox typically. So it takes a little bit of starch out of us. This is great news for PC gamers yeah. who have now uh, a great game like death stranding at 
potentially a great game. Yeah. We're, and, we're and, really yeah. hoping so anyways. Yeah, it looks like a great game. Well, and, and that's the thing. It's such a different looking title, and uh, Hideo Kojima is so has created such a, a weird world with this whole entire uh, new new game. And uh, I would say that like PC gamers are probably going to be very happy to be able to see this come to them. Um, and yeah, it means that we can't brag so much about how it's, you know, <laughs> eat an Xbox. <laughs> Although still, it's not going to be on Xbox, so eat an Xbox. Yeah, right. Um, no, I guess uh, I was more even shocked by the fact that... Um, I, and maybe I'm wrong, I would need to do a little more research on this or at least go back and like watch some interviews and or some trailers, but I was pretty sure Sony was like bankrolling the game. Like they're putting a lot of funding into, they put a lot of funding into um, Kojima Productions, his company, as well as like when they, uh, um, when they were looking for, before they even started creating the game, um, Hideo Kojima and uh, oh, who was it? One of the heads from PlayStation. I forget who it was. They mentioned one of the big like um, kind of like tentpole guys. Leonardo that, DiCaprio. Yeah, let's go with that. Um, <laughs> they uh, they actually traveled like around the world, like and I think Hideo Kojima put it the way he put it, like in a Twitter post, was like we were we're searching the world like high and low, looking for like new technologies. Like, that's all they said. Really, what they were looking for is, like, the technology and the game engine that they were going to make their game in. Instead of building a game video game engine from the ground up, they are going to try to use other people's technology. So they ended up going with the same software and game engine that was used for the game Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, and, uh, and I'm pretty sure the guy who, you know, went with Kojima when they did that was a, a head guy from PlayStation and Sony has put a ton of money into him. So it just seems weird though, with all that to say that Sony would be okay with after bankrolling this whole thing also like releasing it on PC. Like that's usually not their jam. I mean, it just means more money for them. It's a huge install base that's generally untapped. Um, but with having like, uh, you know, Sony productions or whatever at the beginning, like it just seems like a a weird choice, I guess, to me as like a long time PlayStation gamer. Like that's just, that's never happened before. Like I yeah. can't think of any other game. Like they've, they haven't released God of War on PC. They haven't released Horizon Zero Dawn or. Okay. Coming from, from a position where I, I'm not really sure how it works, but if Sony's bankrolling e- even a portion of it, if this game goes on to PC or, or let's even say potentially Google Stadia, couldn't. Oh man, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, it's that'd be insane. Stadia has been quiet a little bit. I mean, they're getting ready to launch this year with a game like this, and it's coming out in November. Conceivably, it could come out on Google Stadia as well. Yeah, and couldn't Sony then be getting a little piece of the pie as far as like the the video game sales because they have bankroll in the beginning? So if that's the case, this is just genius on Sony's part yeah. of saying, hey, no, let's open it, it up a little it bit. It definitely, all it means is just more money for them. Absolutely. But it's just like, it's they've just never done that. Usually when it's their thing, they're very adamant about like, okay, it's PlayStation exclusive, it's ours. Like, well, yeah, absolutely, because it, it, it says something about being able to say, hey, it's exclusive yeah. to PlayStation. But, you need to have a PlayStation in order to be able to play. But yeah, but with doing this, like, yeah, if it's if they just throw it up on Steam, like, they're going to make a ton of money. When it finally goes out to streaming services like Stadia, like, they're going to make a ton of money. Like, it's... It's not a bad choice <laughs> by any means, any, but anything. especially with the size, like, I mean, we've seen the trailers, like it's a beautiful game. It's going to run. So it's probably going to run incredible on PC. It's probably going to look way better than it does on PS4. Has there been any information out there? And, and forgive me that I just don't know off the top of my head. Has there been any information out there thus far about how many hours of gameplay there's going to be in this game? Because it's mm. really hard to tell scope and size based on some of the trailers that we've seen because it looks like it could potentially be huge, but There's, is it huge like a uh, like a Red Dead Redemption two type of huge, or is it uh, or is it going to be something to scale down? Uh, no. As far as I know, no, there has been nothing officially announced how long the game's going to be. Um, so yeah, I I don't know. I'm not sure what it'll look like, but. Well, I say good on you, mate. I like to see them make a lot of money and uh, 
Yeah, the so- the more money they can make, that means uh, the sooner H- <laughs> Hideo Kojima can start making his next game. <laughs> Turns right? around and makes Death Stranding Part 2, right? Or he yeah. makes another Metal Gear Solid game or something, Garrett? Oh, I wish you guys could see his little face. It got all bright and cheery right now. That's sad. That's just sad. I'm currently holding up in front of me. I wish you could all, all see this right now. Actually, you can if you go over to uh, Twitter uh, and follow at G Morlang. I think I retweeted it on the Super Gamer Boys page as well. Um, I purchased a copy of Metal Gear Solid for the original PS1 off of eBay. And it came and... Uh, it's got scratches all on the disc, folks. And I mean, the artwork is jacked. It looks like it's been underwater for months. That's not true. What? That's it not does. true. There is a very light wear and tear. But considering the age of this um, from 1998... This case it's looking pretty good. This case smells like cheese. It does and not, not. Definitely does not. I actually smelled it. Cheese. Dude, did you really? <laughs> yeah, because you always get like used. Have, have you never gotten a ga- used game from GameStop and it smells like weed? No. Yeah. I don't even know what weed smells like, buddy. <laughs> no, yeah, I, that's happened so many times because like people. <laughs> I use, love how you're like. It smells like weed. <laughs> you smell it. People store their weed in their games. Trade it in. You know what's funny is now that you say that, I remember doing that in the 90s. <laughs> Keeping your weed in your game? I'm serious. Yeah. I, hey, I remember now. Yeah, because why would they ever go and look at, <laughs> at the game? That's hilarious. Yeah. So you go to GameStop and the cases always smell funky. Apparently, the kids are still doing that stuff. Yeah, but not this one. This one's good. No, this one's weed free. But anyways, yeah, I was flipping through the booklet and just like holding the case and it just feels so good to have like Sniffing the- Sniffing it all like- <laughs> Have the the double jewel case, like it's like the double disc one. Like it's so awesome. It's so sad. It's the beginning of my collection. I'm gonna start from here on out. I'm uh, using the entire Super Gamer Boys budget to buy uh, Metal Gear um, paraphernalia to collect. So I want to buy. I want to get all the games. I want to get artwork. I want to get little, you know, figurines and statues and stuff. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. It's it's Chip. Hey, um, are you sure that I can't I can't have a bike? I know you said you wanted to keep uh, saving up stuff for your Metal Gear Solid, but all the other kids get to have bikes, Dad. Can I have, can I have a bike, <laughs> please, sir? Not not today, son. Today, <laughs> Daddy needs, <laughs> needs some more Solid Snake statues. <laughs> and scene. And that's exactly how it's going to happen in real life. That poor boy <laughs> is going to come to you and be like, hey, come on, Dad. Yeah, can we just live a normal life or... You know, you're like letting me be a kid and not support your habit. My habit. Have you seen, uh, there's this brand of like collectible statues called First Four Figures. No. Um, And they, they make. I mean, yes. And I can't wait to have my own. They make amazing statues. They're so expensive. Uh, They have this one that's a solid snake, 524 bucks. But it looks freaking sweet. Look at this thing. Isn't that awesome? No. It's pretty legit. No, Garrett. Look at no. the details. In There's that. nothing. He showed me a picture of Solid Snake from the Metal Gear Solid, and it it's like a little child's toy. How no, it's a statue. Five? It's not like an actual. It's just a little stat. It's a, it's a it collectible statue. Collectible statue. And this is why nerds who collect things as adults like toys and stuff, and try to like hope their value's going to get better. This is like the stereotype of why everybody makes fun of us. It's for this very reason. It's totally mint and cherry. Look at the Psycho Mantis one. I don't know who that is, Garrett. It's a bad guy from Metal Gear Solid. If you play the dang game, <laughs> we're going to play it someday. That's what we're going to We're going to do a live stream where we play for like six hours straight. Like we're going to sit down on a Saturday morning. I've never played for six hours straight. It's always like 20 minutes at a pop. And we're going to, you know, pop in Metal Gear, and we're not going to stop streaming until you beat the game. That'll happen so easy because I'm a game beater. That's what they call me, the beater of worlds. Yeah, right. Anyways, if anyone wants to send me a first four figure, um, (laughs) hit me up for my address. (laughs) Uh, Grammy, he's just joking. He does not want that Grammy. I don't know. They're pretty sweet. Uh, Anyways. You stay off of my Grammy. Next news story. This is a little more serious. Um, we usually <laughs> don't touch on some serious stuff. Do uh, I need to be quiet during this portion of the show? No, just you can you can have an opinion. You're very much capable <laughs> of having like a, a, oh, an opinion, I've got an with, opinion. <laughs> without 
without being silly, I guess. Is this going to be the end of the podcast right now? <laughs> no, I hope not. Okay. Um, so this is a this is kind of twofold or threefold. I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of folds to this story. It's kind of there's I'm been a big a, fan of folds. A lot has happened in the last couple of weeks, as a lot of you know. Um, there's been some um, large. There, there's been a lot of mass shootings lately in the United States. Um, there was a one in Gilroy, California, which is just like what, like an hour and a half from here. It's real close, uh, close to home. Um, there was one out in um, Mississippi at a Walmart. There's one in El Paso, I believe, and in, in, I think it was in Texas at least at the at a Walmart. There was a one in Dayton, Ohio, in the bar. Um, it's been kind of insane to be an American the uh, the last few weeks, uh, just dealing with that and fearing for your life, really, anytime you step outside your door, like, okay, what's going to happen today? Um, but with all that, um, as and a lot of you may have already known, because it kind of, I think the news came out, uh, the statement came out pretty much the day we recorded, which is why we weren't able to talk about it. We missed it. Um, President Trump came out... Uh, very quickly and basically was like uh, saying that uh, we must stop the glorification of violence in our society. This includes the gruesome and grisly video games that are now commonplace. It is too easy today for troubled youth to surround themselves with a culture that celebrates violence. Um, that's kind of the main gist of what I think he said more, but that was kind of like the gist of it. Um, there's another statement here from um, Kevin McCarthy, House Minority Leader. Uh, he says, but the idea of these video games that dehumanize individuals to have a game of shooting individuals and others. I've always felt that that is a problem for future generations and others. We've watched from studies shown before of what it does to individuals. Um, so all this came out after all those shootings. Um, very quickly, politicians blame video games for their problems. And this has been something that's happened for years, like since the 90s, like when video games were a thing. Like, it's always been a thing. People are very quick to blame, like, hey, the violence in video games, that's why there's mass shootings, that's why there's violence, that's why there's crime, that's why there's whatever. Before it was uh, it was violence in video games, it was violence in cartoons. Mm -hmm. So um, you would see Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote hitting each other around the head with frying pans and Tom and Jerry yeah, Tom fighting and Jerry, back yeah. and forth and and uh, snapping rat traps on each other's tails and whatnot. And uh, the thing is, is that I, I grew up watching those cartoons and I never once hit anybody in the face with a frying pan. I never once you didn't got even, any... You didn't even try it once. I feel like I tried thought about it. it. I feel no. like I tried it at least once, and no. real quick I realized it's a bad <laughs> no, idea. No, I never did that. Uh, <laughs> the only person that I've ever snapped with rat traps is myself. <laughs> okay, and it sucks. Yeah, it does. Uh, that stuff is going to be in our society. It's what you do with that stuff that uh, defines who you are. So, I don't believe that video games being violent is the reason that these things are happening. These things are happening because there are people who are genuinely sick yeah, and who are feeling alone and isolated or for whatever reason, they don't have their, their dads in the picture. These are some issues where people are growing up without fathers and especially fathers that are going to bust their butt and teach them the right ways. It all comes down to family. If you have a good family if there's mental issues, a lot of times that kind of stuff gets sussed out right away and you get people help. When you care about your family and you see them hurting or look like they're going to potentially hurt others, you usually catch it. I'm sorry the video games are being uh, pointed to as the reason. They're not the reason. No. And, and, they, and they won't continue to, they will continue to not be the reason. There's always going to be this type of garbage. I'm sorry that people are losing their lives and that there are these people that are that are hurting other people. It's it's terrible. My heart breaks for them. I pray for them. But it's not video games. It's not cartoons. Yeah, and that's like even, so in these statements, they mention how there's been studies that prove that it's video games, it's video games, but study of, studies have actually like proved the complete opposite. Like there's been straight up studies that have shown that it's very much not video games, and it is, like you said, like mental health and like a lack of 
um, institutions and services to help those people or even like support groups, whether it's a good group of friends or a good group of family or whatever the person's situation is, like just not having a support group around them. So um, let me let me stop you right there. I just want to I want to add something to it. And this is one of the more difficult things that I'll ever do is being completely honest like this. I I much prefer being the funny guy as opposed to being the guy who who is real and and uh, and genuine. Um, so I grew up in a home where my mom had mental problems. She had mental imbalances. So there would be times when she felt like the TV was talking to her. So I grew up in a house with, with mental problems. And there are times when I haven't felt all the way the greatest, where I'm not, not where I'm hearing voices or anything, but just going, man, I'm not feeling well. But I know that I, I will check in with others. And I think that sometimes when there's those issues, people who care about you and who love you will catch those things. And that's what we need to be doing. If there's people around you that have problems, are are maybe have a mental issue or there's some kind of chemical imbalance it's up to you to reach out to them and to love them towards getting help yeah no totally there's so many programs out there so many numbers you can call or even if you know you know a some sort of uh counselor or something that they can meet with like there's or if you just have a minute like sometimes they just need to know if someone's there listening to them so yeah don't be afraid to you know reach out <laughs> that's uh such a rare thing in today's world as connected as we all are we're all so very uh secluded and <laughs> in reality not connected at all like we think we know everything that's going on in our lives each other's lives but in reality you know very little what's actually going on because no one has real conversations anymore it's just they see their most recent Facebook post and they think they know what's going on, but they don't actually know because they didn't have a conversation with the person and get like the details and ins and out of what is actually going through their mind in that moment. And, um, yeah, so just, just be nicer, be better, uh, love other people, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, um, at a distance. Cause if you touch other people inappropriately, they get all weird. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just that's saying not, that's not good. Either. Yeah. I, I'm sorry about that by the way, Garrett, I, you went in for a handshake. I thought it was a hug. And I I did put my shirt yeah. on right away, and I apologize for the sweat. It, we need to get the air conditioner fixed in here, by the way. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, so as, oh yeah, as far as some of these like studies and stuff they were talking about, though, um, there's actually been like even statistics and numbers where countries where um, video game sales are incredibly higher, and video games are way more. Um, part of the norm yeah part of the norm like uh what was it like in south korea i think it was it has the highest game sales and number of like gamers basically and their uh the numbers for their violent attacks or shootings and stuff like that was just like i don't have the study up in front of me but it was like they were in like the bottom like they were in the bottom five for like the least amount they're in one of those spots there like So literally the people who play the most video games have the least amount of shootings. Um, And that's, that was the case for a lot of those ones in like the top who have played the most video games. Um, Really it's just America who has this issue. And, uh, and and you know what the issue boils down to the, the the entire issue. Some of the things that I'm saying uh, as far as like reaching out and just loving people. But the other thing is most of us are growing up in society now and we're entitled we're always right. We're the best person in the room and we are the most special. The world revolves around us. Well, let me let you guys in on a little secret. Are you listening? <laughs> are you listening? We're listening. You're not special. The world does not revolve around you. You're just like everyone else. And it's okay. You're not alone. Yeah. Except for you, Gary. You're pretty much alone. I'm sorry. That's fine. I like it that yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, <laughs> Um, and then, so that was kind of big news last week. And then over the weekend, some new stuff came out due to those. Um, and this is kind of what the general discussion the last weekend has been about is, um, so Walmart originally, um, yeah, Walmart, uh, on Friday, I think this is from, um, they pulled all of their 
any marketing material, any displays, any, you know, signage, anything in their stores that basically uh, portrayed or advertised any sort of violent video game, whether it's Call of Duty or um, uh, Grand Theft Auto or something like that, boom, they, they pulled it down immediately. It was gone. Any demo consoles that were in the store, like if there was like a, you know, PlayStation 4 or an Xbox or something that you could go play games on. Um, they took off any violent demos, so no more demoing like you know Call of Duties and stuff like that. Any shooters, anything with violence, gone. Um, particularly stuff with guns. That's what they're focusing on is stuff with guns. Um, and so the controversy, though, in what happened this last weekend is um, it kind of twofold for the Walmart thing here. The one, the first thing is um, people just think it's the the. The argument, I guess, or not the argument, but the the issue that people have been having is like, okay, was this Walmart's response because of the shootings? Like they claim, like they say, claim it's just like the, because of the violence in general that's happening in the country, or is it even more just because like some like two of these shootings happened in a Walmart? Um, which is kind of like, oh, it's an interesting kind of thing. Like there's not a necessarily like any. I don't know, one way or another, I don't think it matters too much, but it's like, oh, it is kind of interesting because, like, you don't see GameStop pulling violent games stuff down, and, like, people aren't rioting. Like, people didn't ask for Walmart to do this. It's something that Walmart felt they needed to do on their own, and that's why that's why people are asking, like, why are you doing this? Like, is it just because it happened in a Walmart, or is it because of some other reasons, or what is it? Because, yeah, mm-hmm. you don't see Target doing it. You don't see anyone There's else. There's no telling, but Walmart is traditionally one of the busiest stores there is. Yeah. There's going to be more likelihood there's larger amounts of people so if you're a young person who's sad and confused and messed up and you want to hurt a lot of people you're going to be more likely to go to a place where there's going to be more people hence walmart it has nothing to do with walmart or like people hating sam walton although he is a hateful son of a well, i'm not talking about the shooting though. i'm talking about like the actual like why why did they take down the advertisements just in the in walmarts and why isn't like gamestop taking down advertisements and stuff like well, that maybe it's because walmart also sells guns well so that's <laughs> that's the second part that's the second fold here so the first thing is people are like why are just you doing it and why aren't other companies doing it and then the second thing is like and why are you doing it but you're still selling guns. So you're going to get rid of all the advertisements for all these violent video games, but you still, and I saw this picture on Twitter where there was like, um, yeah, it literally uh, was their video game section, like totally stripped of all these ads and stuff like that. Like it was just like very bare bones now. Um, And right next, like, or like around the corner, like down, you could see there was like a, their hunting section with like a glass case full of like, 10 shotguns in there it's like oh okay cool like it just seems like a weird statement to make like i'm gonna be straight up like i come from upstate new york i live down the country my family has you know i grew up around lots of guns we have lots of guns we shot guns and we hunted and we did all this stuff so i'm cool with guns um and i even tend to lean more towards you know i'm gonna say it like i i i am for you know i think more gun regulation isn't a or more restrictions on getting guns, it's not a bad thing. I think that should totally be done. Um, but, yeah, I also am like, guns are still, like, good to have, like, as far as for hunting and stuff. Like, that's great. Like, I wish, you know, I hope they don't ban them because that's a fun thing to do, go out in the woods and shoot some stuff. Um, uh, but on the other hand, it's, like, to make a statement so blatantly, like, in, kind of in line with Trump and these other people, Video games are bad. We're going to tear down all the advertising for that, but we're still going to sell the weapon. Like someone could still go into a Walmart, buy the shotgun and shoot everyone up and them taking down the the gun ads isn't going to stop them. Like, I don't know. I guess I don't know what their train of thought there was. It just seems like such a crazy thing. <laughs> but Yeah, there's there's no telling. I don't think there was a whole lot of thought there. Um, like it I seemed think very it's like a, it's hair, a quick reaction. It like, seemed very hair trigger kind yeah. of reaction there where um, – yeah, they they felt like they needed to respond but didn't know what to do, and then they thought of something, but they didn't think all the way through. Like, the first thing I should have done is if they really wanted to, I don't know, yeah, make a statement, like, okay, then take your guns off the shelves or whatever. Um, there, There is something to be said as far as, like, the violence in video games, and this goes to parents. I think a lot of times parents allow their kids to play games that they're not monitoring, that they don't watch. You obviously... 
wouldn't want your young age children playing games that are completely realistic and bloody and gory. My, my son is eight. Um, we originally had a hard time allowing him to play Fortnite. I didn't, but my, my wife is very cognizant of those types of things, of the violence and of the you're killing and stuff like that. She went into it and would not let him play in the beginning and then eventually softened on the idea when realizing that it's not gory it's not realistic. It's very cartoony. Someone, quote unquote, shoots your character and it like eliminates you as opposed to killing it like a, a light goes off or whatever. And it's not like a gory death or anything like that. It's almost more like the Tom and Jerry cartoons that you were talking about earlier. <laughs> very much so. So it, it's geared more towards children. So um, it was hard for her to get over that. Would would I personally allow him to play Red Dead Redemption or go and play a Call of Duty game? Absolutely not. Now, I'm perfectly fine with him playing Minecraft, but that's on the parents parenting. I know it's a crazy thought here. Parent your children. It's, it's so unique and different. But, Gary, yeah. you're not going to, as, as your son's coming up, you're going to give him games that are age-appropriate. You're going to let him play the Super Mario Brothers and stuff like that that is going to be appropriate for his age and for his skill level. You're not going to be going, hey, man, Metal Gear Solid, dad loves it, go for it. And it'd be super gory, and maybe you will because you're sick. <laughs> but- well, I mean, that's uh, that's what I was going to say is I I did start playing some of those games like very young. Like I played Metal Gear when I was, I was probably seven or eight. It wasn't I the played- same as it is now, though. That That's that's one point. Right, no, totally. It, it's it, it's, much- it wasn't a photorealistic game and right. stuff too. But that's the only reason I say that is like I played Metal Gear Solid when I was seven or eight. I played... Well, the original Call of Duty, it wasn't like futuristic. It was like the World War II version or whatever back in the day when I was like maybe nine or ten. But you also but back wouldn't then, want to go and like shoot and kill people no. based on that game. But and I think uh, like I, the only reason I, I wanted to share like my experience, like, yeah, I was young and I did play a lot of very mature pride games for my age. But um, what you said earlier, though, like I did have that. Not that I ever had any like mental health issues or anything, but I like... I had that, um, I already had that all kind of, uh, support base set up in my life before anything happened. Like it was one of those things where like, you know, it was something that me and my dad did together. It was something that we talked about. It was something that, you know, as a family, we discussed as a family, we experienced as we kind of like found something we went through. And so to kind of tie in what you said before with like, maybe like there's people out there who want to hang out with you and talk with you and like, make sure you're okay. And like, um, and even to tie into what you're saying now, like parents, like be a part of that. If if you are going to do it, like if you, if you want to introduce them to games like that, sit there with them and have a conversation and go through that with them. Like don't lock them in a room and be like, here's your Grand Theft Auto, go nuts when you're you know, six or seven years old. Like that's when crazy stuff happens, I yeah. think. So it's when it's, it's all, it is all about the environment. So I just wanted to link what you said before to what yeah. you're saying now with my experience, like Basically, I'm saying you're right. Like what you said before was great. What I you're like saying the now sound is right. of that, Gary. Because, I mean, I, I turned out okay. I think I turned out okay. Yeah, for, for the, the most, most part. part. <laughs> for the most part. Yeah, for the most part. So, I don't know. Yeah, this is, it's a huge can of worms that I feel like I, I don't feel like anyone is, um, you know, really, <laughs> can really ever like know exactly what the right answer to this is. Um, but I just felt like we needed to talk about it because it was such a big deal in the news this last week. So this is kind of our thoughts, kind of what this, we just want to share what happened and then some of our thoughts on it. And um, this was heavier than we ever get. And we'll probably, hopefully, never be this heavy again. Thanks to the keto diet because I'm losing weight. I don't have to be as heavy as I come. <laughs> yeah, you've been looking good. I was going to say that. Thank you. Thank you. That's thank you. <laughs> say it again. Oh, well, once is enough. Um, no, no, it's not. Some, uh, actually, some some good reading you might want to go check out as well. Go over to Newsweek um, and look up. There's an opinion piece by Greg Miller, um, the owner of Kind of Funny. He was able to write an opinion piece over on Newsweek. That's really good. It's called Dear President Trump, Video Games Are So Much More Than Violent. And he actually does a really good job of talking about arguing with people that video games aren't the problem isn't going to help anyone do anything like there's no it's not even worth our energy to argue with people anymore about that what we should be doing is educating on them well okay 
it's not that video games aren't this. Well, what are they then? And he really goes through and he's like, there's like this game and that game and this other game. Well, it's like, hey, these are like extremely like games. I think the final point is that he tries to make basically is games have done so much more than just share violence with the world. It's also brought people together in communities. Um, it has, uh, uh, you know, brought, uh, I mean, he talks about with uh, Xbox adaptive controller for disabled peoples being able to play, like people who are maybe locked in their home because not actually, like they're stuck in their home because they physically can't go out. They're stuck in a wheelchair or in bed or something like that. They can go to these worlds and like live their lives and like experience these things. And, you know, games are a beautiful thing, whether it's bringing, you know, millions of people together at like a tournament or, um, you know, allowing one person to be able to like, who isn't able to travel to explore other worlds. Like games are beautiful. Games yeah. are great. That um, article is actually beautifully done by Greg Miller. I really enjoyed that read. And if you have time, you can always look that up and read that. If you happen to have a prairie dog sticking out like Garrett, it's a perfect time to step into the bathroom. Jeez, when you what? Why do you keep bringing that up? It's not. I'm not bringing it up. It keeps trying to come out. And I'm. I no, mean, I not. heard it a little while ago. I'm kind of worried about you. If you need to put pause on the podcast, the people will understand. You could just go ahead and run, and I'll just them and I will have a little one-on-one conversation. <laughs> You're horrible. We won't talk about you. I promise. Uh, I can't stand you. Um, the next news story here: Disney announces twelve ninety nine bundle for Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus. So this is news that came out uh, last week, August sixth, so Tuesday. Um, Disney is coming out with this bundle service, which is something we all kind of anticipated, we all thought was going to happen, but we just didn't know what it was going to involve. We we all figured Disney Plus and probably Hulu. Um, I don't think anyone really expected ESPN to be bundled in there too, um, but for twelve ninety nine, like that is an incredible price. It's an awesome price. Now, uh, question: Is that price with the bundle? Is that going to be Hulu with the ads or ad free? Y- yes. So that is the one with ads. Um, they do not have a price for the one without ads, but based off of their normal pricing scale, it's probably just a couple bucks more. So instead of uh, thirteen bucks, it'll be like fifteen bucks, which is to be honest, still cheaper than what I'm paying for Netflix. I have the the 4K Netflix subscription. It's like 16 or 17 bucks a month. And we barely use it. I've been tempted so many times to cancel that crap because we use Hulu all the time. We use Hulu for everything. Um, so I'm extremely tempted like when this comes out to do this bundle because I'll have Disney Plus, which we're definitely going to use, Hulu, which we already use, and ESPN Plus. I'm not huge into sports. Like I don't watch baseball. I don't watch basketball. Um, what? You're a sporty guy, but you're so well built and everything. Yeah, you know me. The sporty mix sport sport over here. I, I just kind of assumed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, the, I I actually haven't checked out the ESPS, ESPN Plus app very much, but I know they stream esports on ESPN, so I imagine that will be available. <laughs> no. <laughs> Dude, okay, look, I know you're a nerd, but you're like, oh, um, the electronic sports, that's the thing. Yeah. So you went right there. That that's where you, you want to well, go let watch. Me finish. I was halfway through a sentence. You didn't. But you want to go watch people play like okay. we bowling, dude. No, Is I want to watch people play Apex Legends. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, so there's either I'm, I want, I'm like, oh, maybe there'll be some esports on there. But the other thing I'm excited about is uh, a lot of times the UFC fights are now hosted. Their pay per views are on ESPN Plus. They weren't for a while. Now they are. So I'm like, if that's part of the subscription to get free UFC fights. Like instead of paying like 50, 60 bucks a pop, like to get them for 13 bucks a month, like that's worth it. I didn't realize they were on ESPN. Plus, they they uh, have been recently. Okay. Yeah. Like okay. they always uh, used to be se- a separate thing. Right. Um, I, I knew they, they went as pay-per-view. part of the, I, I heard they were part of the streaming service but and now, that they were just like WWE uh, transitioned over to the WWE network. Right. They had a UFC network for a while. But now they've teamed up with ESPN Plus, so most of them are on there. I know that the idea when WWE did it was you're going to lose out on all the money that you, but they've created all this money from all the other content. So I think that's actually genius. I wonder right. if it demonetizes a lot of the the funds for the fighters, or if they still are getting premium prices. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure they're still making the big bucks. I'm <laughs> sure. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, 
McGregor there walks out. Yeah. He's still making his. For that, honestly, <laughs> just for that, that makes it worth it to me right there because right? I love UFC. Me and, too. Uh, I haven't watched a fight in so long because it's so expensive, like 60 bucks to for, and, and none of my friends like it, so they're not willing to chip in. Like, I guess that's what we used to do in the back of the day. Well, we're friends, Garrett. I okay. Mean, I mean, you Are you going to drive up to my house and watch, watch a UFC fight, though? Would you? Are you paying for it? Well, we're splitting it 50 50. Yeah. Okay. Yes. We'll watch the next one then. <laughs> All right. On ESPN Plus, right? Well, yeah, because okay. that's, that's, that's where you watch them, apparently. Yeah, no, that, that's actually a great, no, yeah. a great deal, man. Like Let's thir- do that. I, I know a lot of people were hating on the ESPN thing, but immediately I'm like, oh, UFC fights? I get to watch the fights again? Like, it's been would, so long. <laughs> I would honestly never watch anything else. on e- There'd be no reason or point for me to watch anything on ESPN. But to be able to watch UFC fights, that's that's a heck of a deal. At twelve ninety nine, yeah. what a steal. And you get yeah, all of the Hulu stuff, which Hulu has great stuff. Disney Plus is getting all the Marvel, Star Wars Everything else you'd ever want, all the class, Disney classics, and that's coming out really soon, right? Is like, is it October? I was scrolling through this article trying to find see if they have a date. The last I heard, it was supposed to be I November, November twelfth, November twelfth. November. November I feel like there's a lot of stuff coming in October, November of this year. Yeah, Stadia is coming November. Uh, only for the people who buy the early access one which is like it's like 130 bucks or whatever and you get the controller and the the fire stick or whatever did you already Um, pre-order that are you already ready to go no i haven't i've been tempted to just to try it early but i'm like or i could just wait two months and then try it for free (laughs) and spoken like a morlang that's what i mean the controller is pretty sweet like i'd be down to like it'd be cool to try it but and be like one of the first ones on the ground be able to talk on the podcast but we just need some more Patreon support. We just don't got so the. So you guys can help <laughs> us do that by supporting us on Patreon. And we have some cool stuff to talk about before everyone else. Um, okay, well, that's all the news for this last week. We went really long on that one story, but I felt like that was important to touch on that because I didn't want people to think we were just gonna skirt around the issue. I didn't want people to think we're complete losers. We're just like, yeah. <laughs> and it's important that that it, there was videotape proof while I was touching it that. It was okay for me to touch it. Touch what? You said touching on it, and I just okay. want you to, you know, I don't want to be misconstrued. <laughs> like, what are you touching? Heard it out of context. They're like, okay. JJ's touching on stuff, and uh, just, I just wanted to make sure that I was golden. Okay. Um, let's hit on some new releases. Um, the only one <laughs> that's coming out that's of um, any sort of, you know, worth mentioning, I guess, is uh, Friday the 13th, the game, Ultimate Slasher Edition, is coming on Switch. So this is a game that's been out for a couple of years already for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. I don't know if it's on PC. I know it's definitely on consoles. Um, and I actually loved it back in the day. I Once in a while, I'll pop it back on my PlayStation and play it for a little bit. And it's gotten a lot better. It was super janky when it first came out. Like, you know, you're just able to, like, bust through walls for no reason. Like, it was all super buggy. Or... There was this one way I, uh, as one of the, I was playing as a camp counselor, and I snuck out into the lake. I swam, and then I got like stuck in this little glitch, where I couldn't get out. Like I was stuck in the water, but um, Jason, when he swam out into the water, he there was like something in the, some barrier. He wasn't able to get to me. So it was like a totally a bug in the game where I like broke through a wall, and he could see me. But he, when he tried to get come up to me, he'd like run into this rock, and he couldn't like get to me. He couldn't come near me. That is pretty janky, dude. I won the game a couple times doing that. It was pretty great. Nice. <laughs> but now it's like, oh, it runs a lot smoother. They've added like a tons of like skins from all the different movies and stuff, so you can like be different Jasons and different camp counselors and stuff. Um. But yeah, it just is pretty cool. So the the announcement here, I guess, is it's coming out for Switch now. It was on PS4, Xbox One. Now it's on Switch. So go check that out if you have a Switch. It's it's a pretty fun game for what it is. And that came out uh, August thirteenth, which is today as of release. Um, What's up, everybody? Today's episode of Super Gamer Boys is brought to you by Podcoin. Do you like listening to the Super Gamer Boys? <laughs> of course you do. It's the greatest podcast of all time. Well, the Podcoin app pays you to listen to the podcast and every podcast. It's the podcast player that pays. Just get the Podcoin app on the iPhone or Android. It's free and super easy to use. You can use the Podcoin you earn to claim gift cards or to donate it to charity. 
It literally is amazing. It turns your podcast listening into charity. Or if you like, just get some Amazon or Starbucks gift cards. I use it all day while I'm working doing pest control around people's houses, and it makes my life so much easier. I use the PodCoin app to do all of my podcast listening now, and I love it. Go get it on the App Store or Android today. Seriously, just go get the PodCoin app and use invite code GAMERBOYS. That's G-A-M-E-R-B-O-Y-S, GAMERBOYS. You'll get 300 PodCoin just for signing up if you use my code. There's 300 PodCoin just for signing up if you use the code GAMERBOYS. Go give the PodCoin app a try today. Cool. Uh, let's get into what you're playing. I'm going to go first this week. Please do. Because I think, I think you always go first. I always forget to write down who goes first, but I have this memory of me always saying like, oh, you go ahead. Let me know what you're doing. Blah, blah, blah. You're such a giver. You're always just like always giving. giving. You're like, here. Today, I'm going to take. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I'm taking. Nice. Um, I played a couple games. Uh, I tried out um, both of the PlayStation Plus games that came out. Wipeout. Uh, a lot harder than I remember it being. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that because I think uh, JJ was going to talk some more about his experience with Wipeout. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, I played a little bit of that. I, I didn't really, I literally played like one race. I'm like, uh, okay, I'm going to move on to Sniper Elite because <laughs> I knew what Wipeout was. I'd played that before, like back in the day. Sniper Elite 4. It is actually, the concept of the game is a lot of fun. It's just you can tell it's not made by like a top notch AAA developer, so it's a little janky at times. Like either gra- like both graphically and even like the controls are kind of wonky. Um, but like you're a sniper and you're sneaking into these places and they, you're given objectives like okay you have to kill these three head officers and then kill the the general or whatever. Like that's the very first mission. You're dropped on this island in Italy um, during World War II, and uh, they're like do your thing. And they give you a sniper rifle, a few bullets, a pistol, a machine gun, and uh, you're supposed to sneak through this thing. And, like, the mechanics are cool where, like, when you fire, um, if they don't see where you are, well, they can still hear you. And they'll slowly, the more times you shoot, you know, obviously they'll be able to triangulate your position. Like, where are you at? What's going on? based off of like your your gunshot so like okay when you shoot i'll only do a couple shots and then maybe move to another location then move to another location and then you're also like kind of sneaking around like trying not to be seen almost like an assassin's creed type thing like okay hide behind these walls and sneak into this fortress and stab the guy or something get out before he sees you or um so it's it's some kind of cool stuff like that um blowing up trucks as diversions like so i did that a few times where if they were onto me they thought they knew where i was I'd uh, put a suppressor on my sniper rifle and, like, blow up, like, the truck or something, like, you know, a few hundred yards away. They get distracted by the truck blowing up, and then I bolt out of the building and take off. So there's some cool stuff like that. But it is, it's janky. It's not like a AAA top-notch, you know, Sony exclusive game. It is kind of like a, uh, very much like a, kind of like a B Maybe maybe an A, barely an A developer, not but definitely by no means like triple A. <laughs> so it's it was fun, it was enjoyable, but it's not fantastic. So I would enjoy if you just have some free time and you want to snipe some stuff because it that is a fun thing. No, I've downloaded it. <laughs> yeah, that's fun thing doing the. Uh, do you know this from real experience or no, just the no. game? Just games. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, you never know. You never know. Um, yeah, so I, I actually got to play the Wipeout game that was also the PS Plus. I, I got the uh, Sniper Elite 4, but I didn't get a chance to play it. I did download it. So the Wipeout, you're going to be uh, kind of shocked at how busy I was this past week, what was seeing a dead body and everything. Um, I played about five minutes of video games yesterday with that Wipeout game. And all I know is it is hard as heck. Yeah. <laughs> to stay on the track and yeah, it's hard it's a lot harder than i remember it being i it, like i cannot stay on the freaking it's track so fast it, it's a, <laughs> it's actually really fun i was having the fun for the few minutes that i played but it, it's hard and i probably i might have played 10 minutes or something like that but it's it's a lot of fun it's just extremely hard to like keep yourself on these crazy tracks that are going up and now almost like a roller coaster 
It's just all over the place. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's really, it's really cool. I would suggest if you have PS plus, why not? It's free. Pull it up. Unfortunately, that's all I got to do playing time. And I didn't get to watch anything at all this week either. Dang. So I pretty much did nothing all week long. <laughs> One thing I did start doing this week, I'd like to share with you, oh, no. my friends, I've done something that's totally new to me. It's totally different. And I just want to share it with all of my friends, you guys, the listeners. I started something that's called meditation recently. No. Yes. Okay. And it's amazing. It's amazing, Garrett. Yeah, I started I started meditating every day. I okay. have a, a meditation app that I started doing and I'm totally finding my zen. And it is totally amazing and beautiful. I'm not even trying to be funny or play around. I'm doing this for like five to ten minutes a day and I'm totally getting in touch with my inner self. No, I'm not touching myself, Gary. So I know what you're thinking. Dude, it's been so great. I feel so much more relaxed. And as evidenced earlier, when you brought the serious stuff, I was able to be serious with you for a moment. Yeah, it was kind of nice. <laughs> it was kind of weird, actually, and I'll never do it again. No, you know what? The meditation thing really has helped. Okay. I've been doing that like five to ten minutes a day, and that's been like all the free time that I've had. I'd love to be using that five to ten minutes playing video games, but there just hasn't been a lot of time lately. Yeah, no, I all the games I played pretty much were done like last night as a recording, so it would have been Sunday night. Like I played everything... Because we had friends that, like I said at the beginning of the show, we had friends over uh, from Rumspringa, from from Pennsylvania, and uh, that was the Amish people. In case you're just tuning in, uh, not Amish. They were both Amish. You no, said she had a beard too. That's what you said. <laughs> you're horrible. Um, but uh, yeah. So I I didn't get to play a ton. The only other game I did get to play is a PC game, a PC card game. Oh no, Garrett! No. <laughs> Called Magic: The Gathering Arena. <laughs> oh no, Garrett! I, I put it in code on the sh on the run of show, so JJ uh, wouldn't know what it meant. I, I saw put, MTG and I thought it was <laughs> some kind of gun, like MTG. I thought it was like a gun game. I didn't know MTG Arena. I, I I honestly thought it was some kind of a bro shooter game. I really didn't. no. It's uh, Magic: The Gathering Arena, so it's just. Magic, it's just a card game, but on the computer. So you just play against people online. But you literally hid it in the show notes, so I wouldn't so pre-chamber so a fun joke of me on you time. right now. I, I know you, you are, you're, so well. Dude, you're a horrible human being. <laughs> Don't do that to me anymore. That's horrible. <laughs> uh, but no, I I really enjoy that game. I do not play it enough. Like I've had it. I, I've actually been playing it since the beta time, uh, beta testing. Like I got to thanks to our friend. Um, such from uh, previously of Nerd Dad's podcast, um, R.I.P. Nerd Dad's, but uh, he uh, hooked me up with some codes uh, so I could play in the beta testing phase, and it was so much fun. And they finally went live with the the official release a few months ago. Um, and they've added a lot of cool features, like now you can actually play against your friends and stuff. So if any of you guys out there like Magic the Gathering, it's free to Nobody download does. it. There's not one person listening. Let me, let me finish this. I don't interrupt you when you're saying stupid crap. Yeah, you okay? do. You interrupt me all the time. You're so rude. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyone of you guys out there are interested or enjoy Magic the Gathering, it's a free game. You can download it. There are microtransactions, but you can unlock a lot of cards just by playing. You don't have to pay any money. Um and then, yeah, let me know your username or friend code or whatever, how it, however it works. Yeah, actually, go to our Discord, supergamerboys.com slash Discord, and uh, send a message directly to me saying, okay, I want to play Magic the Gathering with you, and uh, we will play because it's so much oh, fun. Oh, you better be careful. You're going to get overloaded with people That's fine. reaching out Hit there. and The more the merrier. Stuck playing it all the time. If, uh, if enough people, uh, enough, enough of our listeners want to listen, I'll just stream it on Twitch. Stream all of our games on Twitch because that's what people really want to watch is me playing a card game yeah. on the computer. <laughs> yeah, I would want to watch that. <laughs> there, there's, like, there's a lot of channels out there that do that. Really? Surprisingly. Like I, I tried to watch one one time. I'm like, I don't know. I'm just not. Not feeling it. Like the guy was a little funny, so it made it a little entertaining. Mm -hmm. But it was mostly just kind of like, I don't know about this. Like watching someone play a card game is a little, a little tricky. Um, but yeah, it's just a fun game. They just came out with a new um, uh, core 2020 release. So all the new cards for the new season are out right now. 
<laughs> I'm just smiling at you, dude. I, look, I do, I'm not judgy. I'm not being judgy. Okay. I'm just, I'm smiling at my friend yep. because my friend is happy and I'm just excited to see you happy about something. How about we move on to the question of the show? The question of the show? Yeah. That's my favorite part of the show. Yeah, so we've been we've been on a roll with the questions of the show. We had uh, a lot of our listeners write in, so I had some stockpiled, which we're running low. I think I only have like one, maybe two questions left. So if you guys out there have any more questions you want us to answer, whether it's about uh, video games, movies, your love life, what you should eat for dinner, um, write in uh, however you want. You can write in um, oh, through we're... Instagram, Twitter, through our website. You can do it anywhere you can get a hold of on us. Our, on our Discord. Are you up there? No, I'd rather not. There's not really. The Discord's more for like the list. Even, I don't know what it's for. So the Discord is so our listeners and us can can talk and interact. We can interact with our community. Is you know, that that's it's for? about building friendships. It's oh. not about asking. You know. Is it weird that I put those selfies on there earlier? <laughs> I didn't know what yeah, it was, it was for. A little weird. No, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, write in with whatever questions you have because we're running low on our on our bucket over here. Um, we hungry. Yeah, he legitimately has a bucket with the questions in it. It's like, <laughs> a little bucket full of yeah. like ripped up pieces of paper in there. Yeah. So this one comes from Derek Peterson. If that is your real name. That, that's his real name. Are you sure it's your real name? Yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure. Sorry, Derek. I didn't mean to sound like <laughs> I was questioning you. Um, love that the guy from Gotham is starring in the new Star Wars game. If you guys could pick an actor or actress to be in the lead role of a remastered game, and he says, other than Snake, which, <laughs> curse, yes! curse you, Derek. Derek, <laughs> you are you. awesome. Um, All right. Who would you pick and for what game? Okay, do you have one ready already? Um, I do have one ready. Do you have one ready? Yes. Derek, that is an excellent question. It's very hard. Thankfully, Garrett showed me this earlier. And I just thought of the answer a moment ago. Good. <laughs> so, because I am not good at that whole thinking thing. So there were some games that I played uh, when I first got the PlayStation 4 that were from a previous generation of the PS3. And they were updated a little bit, remastered. I would love to see either rebooted or remastered versions uh, with a new actor in it of the Batman games, the Arkham games. I would love to see updated Arkham games okay. with Nicolas Cage what? starring as Batman because really? Nicolas Cage sure makes everything that? great. Um, Nick Cage. I don't know. Nicholas, I don't know Nicky how I feel Cage. about that. Okay, you suck. Now that's going to no, be the no. name, of our, name of our episode today is Nicolas Cage is Batman. Yeah, all right. Um, no, I'm trying to. Oh, why can't I think of his name? Um, no, I like I like the rebooting of the Batman portion. I just don't know how I feel about Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage fits <laughs> into every puzzle. That's how it works. Okay. You put Nick Cage into something better. Nick wow. Cage and brownies, awesome. Nick Cage, Con Air, amazing. Hey, these are all very, very debatable. Wicker Man, not so good. <laughs> um, let's. Uh, oh, what was I gonna? I was so I have my answer ready. There was something See? else. Nick I was Cage gonna, threw you off. Nick no, Cage. you threw me off. No, no. What threw me off is uh, I couldn't remember the name of this stinking actor. I was gonna. Um, do you have a picture of him? I do now. I because I finally remembered his name. So even though Derek said I wasn't allowed to talk about Metal Gear, I'm gonna mention, and oh. I've we've already talked about this before. But Oscar Isaac is Solid Snake. You know, that's that's who I want. Um, he was from, he's in the the new Star Wars movies as Poe Dameron. He's awesome. He'd fit the part. You legitimately went against the one rule that Derek <laughs> said, not Snake. And you went right for that. Heck yeah. You were a fake gamer and a half. No, I'm, and a half, Garrett. I'm a real gamer. No, look at this artwork. This is something someone did. They took Oscar Isaac, and this is what he would look like as Snake. Looks okay. just like him. Okay. We've we've talked about this on a previous episode. I, I remember. It was in our earlier days of the podcast we talked about this. It's a stylized version of Snake. Uh, of Oscar Isaac. Oscar Isaac as Snake with, with a snake. cigarette behind his ear. 
And it looks like he's got raccoon eyes and a headband. And uh, it looks pretty cool. Yeah. It looks, looks pretty cool. Looks dope. Yep. Anyways. I, I wouldn't say dope because <laughs> that's a different connotation for me. I'm okay. a lot older than you. So you say like dope. I don't. There's this place at uh, Pier 39 in uh, San Francisco called Dope, but it's spelled D-O-U-G-H-P, like cookie dough. Dope. Oh. And they literally, you walk in, it looks like an ice cream place. Like they have all the buckets of ice cream in these coolers and they have ice cream scoops, but it's all cookie dough that you can just eat. And they scoop it and put it in a cup. And they even had gluten free. So I went there and it was like, I asked them what the ingredients were. And after I asked them, I kind of regretted it. I'm like, don't tell me that again. Just give me some. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather not know. It was like bean paste and like all this other weird stuff. But then I took a bite and I'm like, it just tastes just like chocolate chip cookie dough. Like it wow. was pretty insane. <laughs> See, if my wife knew that a place like that existed, we would move there to like right outside. Well, here's the, the crazy of- thing: these people, uh, I guess, were originally on Shark Tank. So you can watch their episode on Shark Tank where they pitch their idea. They ship directly to your home. You can order it in anywhere in the U- U.S. They will ship it to you. So as I'm you're welcome, everyone. <laughs> writing this crap down this is awesome. <laughs> um. Anyways, here's my real answer. Uh. So before the show, I was flipping through some stuff, some old PS1 games, just for fun, cause as as one does, just scrolling through <laughs> old games. Um, and I saw Need for Speed pop up, a beloved mm-hmm. franchise that has consistently, at least as of late, flopped. Back in the day, they were incredible games, top-notch games, but in the last, like, 10, I don't know, maybe even 15 years... It's been a while since we've gotten a good Need for Speed game. I think if they did a Need for Speed slash Fast and Furious matchup or whatever you say, cross, you know, cross those two together. So call it like Fast and Speed or Need for Furious or something like that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, With uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Okay. And, uh, oh, wow, I can't think of his name. Vin Diesel. You know, the two guys from guys Fast, from and, Fast Furious. and Furious. Like, I think they they could kill it. Like, have the, the campaign, the story would be, you know, basically just a Fast and Furious story, but it would have, like, Need for Speed in the title or something. Like, have it marketed as Need for Speed. Or even if they took um, the, uh, maybe took Need for Speed completely out of it, but it's, like, the d- original game development studio that made Need for Speed. But I think a Need for Speed type game with The Rock and Vin Diesel. Have there been any Fast and the Furious games? Which it sounds question. funny. I, I don't. I've never heard of any. But it's so weird because that. What have they made? Like eight, nine movies. I mean, it, they just can't. In fact, Hobbs and Shaw is out right now. Okay. And that's like a little spinoff of those with uh, Jason Statham and The Rock. So and here, that's like dominating in the theaters right yeah. now. So I'm curious if they've ever tried to jump into video games in the past. So here's what they have. Um, there is, there was a, the Fast, let me read this. The Fast and the Furious, it was a game on PlayStation 2 and PSP. And then there was a game called Fast and the Furious Showdown, which came out on Xbox 360. And then there was a game called... Uh, oh, it was a. Uh, it was actually some DLC for Forza Horizon Two for Xbox One. It was like a you could get the Fast and Furious cars in Forza. So there's only been two official Fast and Furious games: one for PlayStation Two um, and PlayStation Portable, and then another one for Xbox 360 and PS3. I imagine. So okay. yeah, there has been games, but I think if they rebooted like Need for Speed, that's why I'm thinking like if they branded it more with Need for Speed, like teamed up with EA. To make like a more top notch triple A game. I think we shared it last week. I've never seen a Fast and the Furious movie. And I think can't remember if you said you haven't so either. I I think it was a couple that was two or three weeks ago we talked about that because at that point I had never seen one. Oh no, Garrett, you but the they, dark side. They put they put the first few back on Netflix. I got about halfway through the first one. And then I think Shep woke up from his nap, and I never finished it. So and, I've watched half of the first one. And what was your opinion? Uh, it didn't does not age well. What year did it come out? <laughs> I don't know. 
But what if, if it if the first game was out on uh, on two thousand one two? Yeah, it would have had to have been a while ago. It was two thousand one, and at that point, The Rock wasn't part of it. It was just you know Vin Diesel and Paul Walker, um, Michelle Rodriguez, Jordana Brewster. Yeah. So yeah, I think like a more updated one based off of like especially what it's become. Like it's gone from being like a racing movie to an action movie, like them jumping out of planes and stuff with their cars. I think it'd be a lot of fun. So that's my thing. My that's my pick. Very cool. Cool. Alrighty, guys. Still think Nick Cage should be Batman. I'm just saying. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Stop disagreeing with me. Yeah. Alrighty, guys. Thank you so much for listening this week. I hope you all enjoyed this episode uh, that we put together for you. Um, if you did, go over to iTunes and review us over there. Um, give us a rating. Give us a review. You can even um, down, give us a download over there. That helps us you know, bump up in the charts. If we bump up in the charts on iTunes, that means more and more people will find us. Um, if you have a second, go over to patreon.com slash supergamerboys. You can support us over there. Um, like I said earlier, even just a buck is such a huge help. Um, cause that adds up. Cause if even, you know, a few people give a buck, that's thing, a few bucks, that's a few bucks. See how I did the math right <laughs> there? there um, and that really helps us, uh, yeah, keep the mics on, keep the lights on and keep on bringing you guys cool, cool stuff. Um, if you also want to talk to us throughout the week, supergamerboys.com slash discord. If you want to check out our YouTube channel, subscribe at supergamerboys.com slash YouTube and find our Twitch channel. Subscribe over there or follow us at, at slash Twitch, supergamerboys.com slash Twitch. If you have any other questions, concerns, issues, find us at Twitter and Instagram at supergamerboys, facebook.com slash supergamerboys, our website, supergamerboys.com. We're supergamerboys all over the place. I think if you just type in supergamerboys in Google now, we're all over. Yeah. Like we are. We dominate Google. Pretty much. Um, I'm on Twitter at G Morlang. I'm on Twitter at JJ Purdom. And thank you so much to Star Andrews for our logo. Check her out on Instagram at Ground Floor Graphics and facebook.com slash Ground Floor Graphics for all her great printing goodness. She she posts once in a while. Not not that often, but when she does, it's she has some cool stuff. She DM'd me because I said that she was attractive. So thank you once again, Star. <laughs> Um, she did not DM me. Just saying. No, I don't. She, for all we know, we don't. She doesn't even listen to the show anymore. So we just say whatever we want. Well, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you always tell me that? What are you worried about? I'm worried about a lot of things, JJ. You, I am constantly in a state of worry when you're around. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all we got this week, folks. Thanks for tuning in and listening to the Super Gamer Boys. You guys are the lights of our lives. Uh, Except for our families and and Jesus, of course. Yeah, of course. Um, Yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. And we'll catch you all on Flippity Flop. Flippity Flop.